check, check.
It's big and trick trivia time. Grab your friends and play it online. With Ali and Gina and Taco just for you. It's big and trick trivia time. And we'll feel it all out. Welcome. Good evening. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Uh, my name is Ali with Bag of Tricks Entertainment. We are going to play some general knowledge trivia here in just a few minutes. Thank you all for being here. Um, if you haven't played trivia with us before, I'll explain exactly how this game works. Right before we start, we usually give everyone a few minutes here to join and figure out the system. Again, if this is your first time, if you can hear me and you can see me, you're halfway there. If you actually want to participate in the online game, Make sure, I had this rotating before, if you see at the bottom of the screen here, make sure you join online.begatrix.com and enter the code TRIX2. So this is how you actually participate in the online game. Our recommendation is to watch the YouTube video from your computer or from your smart TV and then join the online game from your phone. That way, you just have your phone for the game. You can watch the, the, the video of me hosting it. Uh, on your computer or your TV. Again, if you have a smart TV, you can put the YouTube app up. Uh, if you've liked our page, the Bag of Tricks Entertainment YouTube page, if you like and you subscribe to that page, it makes it a lot easier to find these videos when they pop up. It'll give you a notification. You can just click right on it. Um, so I'll explain how the game works in a little bit, but I want you to know right now, if you do want to participate, be eligible for the gift card tonight. We do have a prize. Make sure that you join the online game. I'll go over those again at the end, but online.begatrix.com slash tricks2, or just go to online.begatrix.com and enter the code tricks2. Uh, before we go any further, tonight is sponsored. As I just mentioned, we have a gift card for first place, the top participant tonight. We'll earn $25 to our incredible sponsor, Elmhurst Brewing Company. You can see me here hanging out digitally, virtually in the brewery. Unfortunately, I'm not actually at the brewery. Um, I do wish that I could be, but this is the next best thing. They have graciously sponsored a lot of our events. They've sponsored tonight's General Knowledge and tonight's Simpsons event coming up at 9. I'll tell you about that. Uh, but please, if you haven't yet, do check them out. Give them a like on Facebook. Uh, they're right in Elmhurst, downtown Elmhurst. They do limited delivery, carry out, curbside pickup. They have delicious beer, delicious food, and all sorts of specials going on all the time. So check them out. Tell them thank you for sponsoring uh, these events for Bag of Tricks Entertainment. If you win tonight, you get a $25 gift card. It's, it's completely electronic. They don't even have to mail anything to you. They just give you a $25 tab. So the next time you do order from them, you get $25 towards whatever you get. So thank you to Elmhurst Brewing Company. And a big, giant thank you to Cindy G, this week's donation drawing raffle winner. Uh, what that means for those of you that may be joining us for the first time or, or haven't heard of this, uh, obviously, you can see below me that we do accept donations for Bag of Tricks Entertainment. Um, if you feel so inclined, I'll tell you about that in a little bit. But what I want you to know right now is every week we draw one name out of the individuals who have donated over the last week. And that person gets to choose one of the trivia nights that we host in the following week. So typically, individuals will choose a theme trivia night. Um, or, as Cindy did for this week, you can ask us to do a, a good old-fashioned general knowledge trivia and then give us a few categories that you would like questions to be incorporated from. So for tonight, Cindy elected to go that route. We are doing a general knowledge trivia, so there are 30 questions. They are about a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Some of them are easy, some of them are tough. Um, typically when I do this, I try to spread all of the questions out over many, many, many categories um, that I enjoy. Uh, but tonight, I still have some random questions that I chose, but uh, per Cindy's request, we you will see questions from random categories we may not usually include, like specifically Chicago sports teams. We have a couple questions from good old fashioned nursery rhymes. We have 60s and 70s music questions, as well as country music questions. I'm a country music fan. Uh, I know some of you out there are, but many of you are not. Don't worry, uh, I tried to make sure that these questions, even though they're from specific categories, they're still approachable, even if you're not a uh, expert on the subject and before anybody asks Cindy does not know the questions that I am using she only gave me the category so this is still a completely fair game if Cindy wins and Cindy 
plays. Uh, props, congrats, uh, she deserves it. So uh, these questions are new to everybody except for me. I wrote them just a little while ago today. Uh, so thank you, Cindy. Uh, if you're out there and you do uh, feel like supporting Bag of Tricks financially, the links are down below. Um, we've been telling you since the very beginning, we're gonna continue to do these events no matter what, but your donations help us do that. Um, these events are not free to put on. The, the app that we use for trivia online, uh, there's a fee for that. So the donations that you guys send help us out immensely. They help us put on more events, different types of events, and allow us to offer these fun, interactive things like our donation drawing raffle, um, giving you guys the power to choose one of the trivia nights. So obviously Cindy won this week, but one of you out there who donates from last Saturday until this Friday will get to choose a trivia night for next week. You can see the events we have coming up this week rotating on the screen next to me here. Uh, so this is gonna be a little out of order, Actually, I'll just wait for it to restart here, and then I'll go in order. Uh, so again, thank you to everybody that supported us, whether it's financially or just online, liking the Facebook page, sharing it, commenting, inviting your friends. All of those things help us reach more and more people, and it helps everyone have a little more fun. The more people we have on here, the more conversations we have. If you haven't yet, join our Bag of Tricks online community on Facebook. Uh, it's free to join. It's just for people who participate in these online events to continue the conversations that we start here uh, on Facebook. So now we're caught back up. You're going to see rotating up here. Coming up tonight, right after we finish this, at 9 o'clock, we're going to have classic Simpsons trivia. So roughly seasons 1 through 12 of America's Favorite Family, all sorts of Simpsons trivia coming up at 9 tonight. And then tomorrow at 7 p.m., another round of music bingo with the incredible Bobby K. This week, he is diving into all of the deeper cuts and B-sides, songs you probably recognize, but maybe you don't think to put on first when you start listening to an artist. On Wednesday, in celebration uh, also of the new Parks and Rec episode coming out on Thursday, we're doing Parks and Rec trivia at 9 o'clock after music bingo. Thursday, we have an event sponsored by the Cantini First Division Museum out of Winfield. Um, that is a historical military, uh, military history trivia on Thursday night at 7. And then 9 o'clock, another round of general knowledge trivia. This time, we're back to anything and everything as far as the questions go. But every single event this week has a prize up for grabs, um, including this one you're going to see right here, Food for Thought. This is an interactive trivia night to benefit the West Suburban Community Pantry. So this one is the only one this week that's not free to play. You do have to purchase a ticket through the West Suburban Community Pantry's website, and then you can play online for a chance to win prizes and help out the Suburban Pantry at the same time. We have SpongeBob Trivia Saturday at 3. Those events on Saturdays are always completely family friendly, so bring the whole family and play SpongeBob Trivia and then join us for our first ever trivia brunch. Uh, obviously, we won't all be eating in the same place, unfortunately, but we figured, why let that stop us? So Sunday, we're going to do Golden Girls Trivia Brunch. We're going to do it at 1 p.m. All of these times are central. 1 p.m. on Sunday. That one's sponsored by the incredible McWethy's Tavern out of Romeoville. If you haven't had their brunch, once they start doing it again, um, where you can dine in, it's incredible. So they were the first person I thought of for that one. They're going to sponsor that. So we have up to $75 going out to the participants that uh, finish in the top place for Golden Girls Trivia. But even if you don't know a lot about Golden Girls, it's going to be a heck of a good time. I'm making a cheesecake. We're making mimosas. Uh, and we're ordering in brunch from McWethy's Tavern. So join us. Consider if you're in the area ordering from them. Otherwise, make yourself some brunch. Make a mimosa or a Bloody Mary or both. It's quarantine. We do what we want. Uh, and then join us Sunday at 1 o'clock for Golden Girls Trivia. That's it for the events this week. Once again, thank you to everybody that has supported us, whether it's just, again, telling your friends about these events. We're on a mission to have participants from all 50 states, and we are very, very close. I need to update the list tonight, but I know we checked off Hawaii. Um, we're, we're missing a few more of the western states uh, and the very northeast, Maine, we haven't hit yet. Um, we need Alaska. So if you know somebody in Maine, Alaska, I think we were still looking for Nevada. So join us. Invite your friends. Yeah. Uh, Mississippi. Mississippi. Idaho, Delaware. Idaho, Delaware. We're looking for those states. We have Maine. We have Maine. Good. Uh, we also have participants no, that have been joining us from uh, Canada. So thank you to our regulars who we love from up north. We have people that are joining regularly now from New Zealand. They're playing at lunchtime when we're playing in the evening. Uh, Australia, Pakistan. Uh, we've had Scotland and the rest of the UK joining us. So Thank you all. This happens because of you. We're doing this because of you. We're trying to give you guys something to do to take your mind off all the crazy stuff going on since we can't be out at the bars doing this. We figure let's do it in our own houses. So 
Once again, my name is Ali with Megatrix. We're going to dive into trivia now. If you have not yet, make sure you do in the next 30 seconds join the online game. I'll throw it back up on the screen. Online.begatrix.com slash tricks2 or you can just go to online.begatrix.com, hit enter, and then it'll ask you for the code. You just type in tricks2. Once you are there, you'll see a screen that looks like this. Um, especially if you're playing from your phone, it'll look just like this. It'll say, hi, how's it going? What's your name? My name is Ali. And what state are you playing from? Well, I happen to be in Illinois. Uh, and a quick update. Gina put this in the comments earlier. It, but uh, Lockport, Illinois is in a pretty severe thunderstorm watch slash warning. So if we ever suddenly go off air, our power probably went out. Um, we'll try to keep you updated via our phones if that happens. But as long as our power and internet's on, we'll be here. Um, so once you hit go, the screen will say we'll be playing this soon once the game begins, and the game won't start until I click play on my side. Once I click start, a few things are going to happen. The first question is going to pop up on the screen. The first 15 questions tonight are multiple choice. Every multiple choice question is worth a maximum of 100 points. A maximum of 100 points. I'm emphasizing maximum because... For our multiple choice questions, the sooner you click your answer, the more points you earn if you're correct. So you have a 30 second timer. If you hit your answer two seconds in, you're gonna earn more points if you're correct than somebody who takes 20 seconds to answer. You'll both earn points if you're right. Uh, but this multiple choice format does reward those who answer a little bit uh, quicker. Um, so we're doing that to add some competitiveness and because many of you have asked, how do you stop cheating online? Well, we can never stop it. But this certainly deters it. If you have to take time to Google an answer, even if you get the right answer, you're going to earn less points than somebody who knows it and answers honestly right away. Um, so I know many of you have asked. That's one thing we're doing to help with that. But again, please be on your honor, guys. I can't be there watching you. So please respect the fact that we're taking our time to put these events on. And don't cheat. Don't Google. Don't Bing. Don't Alta Vista. Don't ask Jeeves. Um, if you're playing with friends digitally or virtually, if you have a, a team of friends on Zoom, that's perfectly fine. You guys can all talk and come up with the answer together. The answer just has to come out of a human brain, all right? That's the only real rule. You'll have four multiple choice options, A, B, C, or D. One of them is always correct. If you get it right, you earn points based on how quick you answer. So that's all you need to know for multiple choice. The only other thing is that if you click an answer and you're wrong, you can't undo it. Um, so there's a little strategy here. You want to make sure that you click quickly, but don't click so quickly that you're not paying attention to what you hit. Once you click an answer, it's in. If you're wrong, you're wrong. Um, this first question that we do is a practice question. So it's going to look and act just like a regular question, but it won't be worth any points. This is just so that you can feel familiar with the system before we dive into the first actual question. So here we go, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for supporting Vega Tricks, for supporting each other, and washing your hands as much as you do. We know you do, and we appreciate you. Uh, so cheers. Thank you all for being here. All right, first question. Let me take this off the screen. It's coming up on the screen right now. This is always our first question now. We do a practice question every time. Uh, what is the name of your trivia host tonight? It is me. Of course I know him. That's me. What is the name of your trivia host? So you have a 30 second timer that doesn't start until I click it, which is right now. And you have to choose between these four answers. What is the name of your trivia host? Is it Leonardo, Raphael, Donatello, or Ali? Chris B, you chose your favorite one. I completely respect it. This is just, this isn't for points. Uh, it, is it supposed to say 427? Rich Hansen, no, it's should... in the right place now. Okay. <laughs> Rich, that's okay. <laughs> You're here now. All right, here we go. So now, again, if this is your first time playing, you're going to see a few features of the system that we use. We can see how everybody guessed. I appreciate all of you that said Leonardo, Raphael, Donatello. They're all great Ninja Turtles. But the best one, the only one that's missing, is the one I replaced here. Is Michelangelo. My name is Ali. Good job. 104 of you out there knew the correct answer. Cheers. We are going to move on to the real questions here in just one second. Let me check on the taco. Oh, he's not there. All right. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now these questions are counted for points. The lightning is a striking, so hopefully we make it through this. Here we go, guys. Question number two. This one's for points. Question number two. 
will load as soon as it decides that it wants to, which is now. If this is your first time with us, know that we're at the mercy of the internet, which isn't always uh, perfect. So I talked, we're doing go uh, Golden Girls trivia this Sunday. Here's a fun intro Golden Girls question. Which of the following names listed below was not one of TV's Golden Girls? Which one of these was not one of the main characters on the Golden Girls? Was it Esther, Sophia, Dorothy, or Rose? Which one of these was not one of the main Golden Girls? Michelangelo, yes. This game is too hard already. I'm sorry, Brian or Maggie, whoever's behind the keyboard. That was Maggie who asked the question about your name, not this one. Oh, sorry. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. I need to watch, rewatch some Golden Girls. We are going to rewatch some Golden Girls before this Sunday. Like Jen Stern, A Case of the Missing Taco. He is currently begging Gina to drop a pepper on the floor. She's cutting up red peppers for a salad. All right, let's see what you guys thought. Oh, he went hog wild from broccoli. Uh, a lot of you said Esther. 11%, 13 people said Sophia. I haven't mentioned tonight, we have 114 people playing, so thank you for being here. Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. That makes my whole day, guys. Thank you. Uh, a couple of you said Dorothy and Rose, but the correct answer was Esther. Esther, not one of their names. Uh, we were just missing Blanche up there. Sophia, Dorothy, Rose, and Blanche. I'm certainly, I think I like to believe I'm a Sophia, but I'm probably a Rose. Yeah, I think we're all a little Rose. Yeah, I think we're all a little Rose right now. Is right. Good job. She is sweet. She always means well. I got a hint of Blanche in me? Thank you. I'm proud of that. Here we go. Question three. Uh, which television program listed below features the catchphrase... Come on down! Which television program features the catchphrase, come on down? Is it Family Feud, Hollywood Squares, Wheel of Fortune, or The Price is Right? This is going to this is gonna be our first social. And this, unless I'm missing any answers, this is going to be an official social. Come on. One of my favorite game show gifts. <laughs> All right, guys. Cheers. Congratulations. All of you new. 115 wow. people. Come on down is the name, uh, the catchphrase from The Price is Right. So overall, these questions start out easy and get tougher. Um, you may disagree on some of them, but for the most part, they start out easy and get tougher. They're worth more points later on in the game, too. So don't give up hope if you're not doing well in the beginning. Um, so if you're new to trivia with us, we have a tradition of cheersing. We call it a social or a sociable or a, a loe ma Dang it. Our friends from Hawaii told us what a they say. Maluna. A kole maluna. However you say cheers, wherever you're at, uh, we like to celebrate when we do very well or, to Chris Barbian's point, when we all do very poorly. Uh, cheers, guys. Our first social. Hawaiian friend. Our Hawaiian friend is here, and her name is Kel? Karen, I believe. Karen. Sorry, I'm trying my hardest. Correct I'll, me if I'm wrong. Yeah, correct us if you're wrong, Karen. Uh, and if you're not, Karen, obviously. Question four. We'll look at the standings after question five. Uh, so again, I mentioned some Chicago sports trivia. The gifts and the pictures that you see sometimes have nothing to do with the question, so don't let this one, that's not a Chicago Blackhawks mascot. Um, it's just a fun hockey gift that I found. So question four, what Blackhawk was named team captain at the young age of 20 years old in 2008 and still holds the title today? Which of these individuals is captain of the Chicago Blackhawks? Is it Brent Seabrook, Patrick Kane, Duncan Keith, or Jonathan Taves? So again, shout out to Cindy. Thank you for the donations. I'm so happy that your name was drawn and that you chose to have us do a general knowledge night with a bunch of fun stuff in it. Uh, yes. This is one of the, this is the first of a few Chicago sports trivia. Um, yeah, I don't do a lot of sports to begin with. And when I do, I don't, t I try not to just do Chicago because again, if, if I was hosting at the bar Chicago trivia, that makes a lot of sense. But we have friends again, playing every day from Canada, from Hawaii. Now we've seen all over the United States, New Zealand. Um, so Chicago sports going to have a little bit of an edge if you are near us here. Uh, this is a Chris Barbian social is what I'm calling it. Patrick Kane said 27% of you. Duncan Keith, Brent Seabrook, not many of you. But 79, 69% of you said Jonathan Taves. Jonathan Taves, congrats. Uh, uh, 
Right? Once yeah. upon a time, Maggie right. worked at the Tilted Kilt and carded Jonathan Taves when he you know, came in. He's still, he looks like he's under 21 still, I, I think. I keep him humble, too. You know, you I agree. Here, I'll, I'll tell you a quick story, uh, and I'll keep it quick, because I know I've already been talking a lot. I worked at the Chicago Bears camp at Olivet uh, Nazarene University for one summer, and my job was to check everybody into their room when they arrived for camp, which was awesome. As a Bears fan, I got to meet everybody. And I thought it was hilarious when, like, the big stars, Jay Cutler came in, is the best example. And he walked up, and I said, name, please. And I thought that he would be a huge jerk about it, but Jay Cutler was the most chill, like, um, Jay Cutler. I was like, all right, cool. He was so nice. The worst guy on the team, and I'm sorry to anybody that loves him, Robbie Gold was the biggest jerk in the world. He literally handed me a, a, a pack of fan mail and said, throw this out for me. I'm not kidding you. Kicker, right? The kicker, the wow. kicker, good as gold. He's a great kicker, just a not a nice guy, not a nice guy. Taves is yeah. Canadian. See, I did that on purpose. We're looping in our Canadian friends, even with Chicago trivia. Uh, here's our first nursery rhyme question. Which nursery rhyme listed below? Uh, which nursery rhyme character was found under a haystack, fast asleep? According to the popular nursery rhyme, which of these characters was found under a haystack, fast asleep? Mm -hmm. Gina. G it was Gina, yeah. I'm sorry, Kristen. Yes, it was Robbie Gold. I'm sorry. He was not you did, nice. Right. Yes, I'm really sorry. And I loved him. I think everybody in Chicago loved Robbie Gold when he was on the team. Devin Hester brought a, like, full-size rug from home into an Olivet dorm room and just made us move everything so he could lay his rug out. Yeah, nice, guy. Like nice guy. Nice guy. I'm all about that, creating your own. Yeah. I have I have a bunch of stories from those days. That was fun. Real uh, talk. Never knew this story before. Oh, yeah. Uh, little Boy Blue. 62% of you. Little Boy Blue. Uh, fast asleep underneath the hay sack. So congratulations. 72 of you knew it. Here's how the system works. I'm going to put the rankings up on the screen. What you will see at the top of the screen are the... the uh, individuals in first, second, and third currently, everybody else is going to rotate through. So if you don't see your name in first, second, or third, watch for it. It'll show up somewhere depending on where you're at. These scores will change. These are, again, even if you've gotten every question right, you may not be at the top if it took you longer to answer than other individuals. So here we go. On the screen, the rankings. Currently in first, second, and third, we have Jeff Drack, Team Cream, and the Spicy Meat the Balls. Uh, I see... Jen in fourth, the IPA holes in 13th, uh, Skull and Squad, Karen A in 22nd, Coach R in 27th, Count Monkey Nuts, uh, Brian and Maggie, I see you out there, 38th, a poo poo and a pee pee, back again, uh, may I see your manager, what's up Tommy, holy cow, Holstein cow, I like it, I heard this was good place trivia, um, everything is... What's it, what's it say on the wall behind it? Welcome, everything is fine. Welcome, hard. everything is fine. I'm sorry, this is not good place trivia, but everything is fine. Let's get quizzical and trivia, Newton John. Some of the fun plays. Hey, Albin Sakura, I see you out there. Thanks for coming back. Bert and Laura. What'd you say? Two Olivia Newton John references. Okay, that's what I. Let's get quizzical. Yeah, yeah that's beautiful. Cool. Dunder Mifflin B team, the Quizards of Waverly Place. Amanda and Marcos Glover, welcome back. I love recognizing so many of these names, guys. Uh, it means a lot to me that we have trivia regulars online. That's a sentence I never thought I would say a month and a half ago. Um, but we have regulars who play trivia online with us. So certainly making the most of a crappy situation. Uh, and we're happy to be doing it with you all. So here we go. We'll do five questions at a time and then look at the standings. So we're going to move on now to question number six. Uh, part of our country music questions, Johnny Cash was one of the most influential musicians of the 20th century. Which song listed below was not by the Man in Black? Which of these songs was not a Johnny Cash song? Was it Ode to Billy Joe, Cocaine Blues, Walk the Line, or Folsom Prison Blues? Thank you, Katie, for the donation. I know more of you have sent it in. Uh, I don't want to not call it out. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Shane. Morella, we appreciate all of you. Sincerely, those donations mean a lot to us and help make all of this happen. So thank you guys so much. All right, let's see what you guys thought. So 
Sorry, I froze on me for a second. I think we're good. 61% uh, of you said Ode to Billy Joe. 39% of you said Cocaine Blues. The correct answer was Ode to Billy Joe. Uh, I'm looking. I didn't actually look up. I just Googled a different song. That was by Bobby Gentry. Bobby Gentry. Uh, 1976. Ode to Billy Joe. The rest of those were Johnny Cash. Question number seven. Which fast food chain served a sandwich called the Double Down? Which one of these fast food chains could you have ordered a sandwich called the Double Down? Is it Burger King, Arby's, McDonald's, or KFC? Which one of these served the Double Down? Big Lebowski. Yeah, watch it, and then we could do it for sure. Oh my God, I love Devin Hester, Maggie. Yeah, he was a cool dude. Some of the guys were super into I mean, as you can imagine, like six, seven, 300 pound individuals walking in. Now, I wanna know if Taves is cool when Maggie carded him. Would you jerk? Oh yeah, uh, cool? Maggie, was Taves nice to you when you carded him? There's our question back. Did he play it cool? Or did he think that was really rude? Uh, you guys know your sandwiches. The double down was the KFC sandwich. Uh, I believe that was the one that had chicken as buns. Um, it was just chicken and then bacon and cheese in the middle. Double down. Uh, Arby's has the meats, but uh, the double down was KFC. Kelsey, who's in New Zealand, says they were able here yesterday for five weeks. There's a little in the car fuse down the road. They're bringing traffic control. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. All right, here we go. Question number eight. Uh, some older music. I told you we have quite a few questions from 60s, 70s, a little bit of 80s maybe. Hey ho, let's go! Our popular lyrics often heard at sporting events. Hey ho, let's go! Our lyrics from which of these Ramones song? Is it I Wanna Be Sedated, Blitzkrieg Bop, Rockaway Beach, or Teenage Lobotomy? Coen Brothers trivia. We could That'll go on the list. I'm pretty sure the first um, trivia we'll do that celebrates like a, a full catalog of somebody or actor or director is going to be Adam Sandler. A lot of people have asked, and I've watched almost all of those already, so it'll be easy to, to write. Um, but certainly we'll do some other ones. All right. You guys did not struggle here. A couple of you said I want to be sedated, but the correct answer is Blitzkrieg Bop. Tablet, screen, bop, bop. Good job. Question number nine. Uh, so this one, how many months of the year have 31 days? I'm starting the timer quickly because this is only tough if I keep you under stress. How many months of the year have exactly 31 days? Five months, seven months, eight months, or six months? How many months of the year have exactly 31 days? Days. Stephen Tobolowski trivia. Is that an 1860s author, Chris? Uh, Taze was super nice. Gave it right away. Oh, his manager kind of sucked, though. Yep, manager's tip, and it was average at best. Oh, <laughs> free drinks. Come on. Come on, guys. All right. Like I said, I think if you guys had time to sit there and think about this, you'd, we'd all get it. We'd have 100% people, I would guess. Um, but 21 people said five months. 56 said seven months. 20 of you said eight months, 19 of you said six months. The correct answer is seven months of the year. Seven months, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, and, wait, October and December. Yeah, got it. August, October, December, seven of them. Good job. All right, we'll do one more question, then we'll look at the standings. Another nursery rhyme in the nursery rhyme. Hey, diddle, diddle. Who had a fiddle? In the nursery rhyme, hey, diddle, diddle. Who had a fiddle? Was it the cow, the moon, the cat, or the dish? In the nursery rhyme, hey, diddle, diddle. Uh, March 31st does not exist. Yes, Missy, you are correct. It's when I schedule all my meetings. Every March 31st. Who would... I have a friend who... Uh, Whenever somebody would ask when his wife's birthday was, he always just said, what was it, the last day of April? The end of April? Yeah. And so for the longest time, he thought that it was April 31st. 
or something like that, not knowing that there wasn't an April 31st. Was it May or was it March? It might have been May. I don't know. But yes, I agree with you. Yeah. This, these kind of things happen in real life. I don't have a play right here. Kate's the taco cam today. He's feeling shy. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys did not struggle here. 115 people. That's a social. Cheers. Congratulations. You guys know your nursery rhymes. Maybe I should have done more nursery rhyme trivia. Uh, the cat had the fiddle. The cat and the fiddle. Good job. There was a good gif of a person dressed up as a cat playing the fiddle. Um, but that's the struggle with this system is if I put a gift like that and it gives it away. I wish I could reveal it right now. All right, let's look at the rankings. Oh, cheers. Missy D up into first. Nicole Renee in second. Kevin Flug in third. I see the spicy meet the balls in 13th. Jen and Jen Sterna in uh, 13th and 15th. Clover team name. I like that. Genuine. Bonafide. Electrified. <laughs> you come on Simpsons trivia later. Um, Rebels of the Sacred Heart. I do believe we have a, if it's the same Sacred Heart, we're doing a fundraiser here in a few weeks for a Sacred Heart school. Uh, Phoebe S., yes, I see you out there. Thank you for being here. Phoebe, one of our incredible hosts at Bag of Tricks Entertainment. A poo-poo and a pee-pee. We'll never get over that team name. Uh, speaking of Phoebe, if you guys are out there and you enjoy playing trivia, you would like to do trivia on a smaller scale, maybe with just your friends and your family, or if you would like to organize an event for your coworkers, since you're all in different places in your own homes right now, we can now host trivia for you online for private events. We can do it uh, via YouTube, via Zoom. Uh, we can do it as small or large of an event as you'd like. There are details for that on our website, and I'll be doing a post tomorrow on Facebook to give you guys more details as well. Um, so do reach out. We have limited availability. There are only three hosts right now that are hosting those. Um, so time slots do fill up quickly, but we are doing them as often as we can to, again, keep you guys entertained. Uh, here we go. Question number 11. We have five, we have six more multiple choice questions, and then we're flipping the script to something else. Question 11. This is question 11. It's the question 11 drink time. It always takes a second to load. Come here. Okay, fine. Stay over there. That's cool, too. Question number 11. According to Paul Simon's song, his infamous song, How Many Ways Must There Be to Leave Your Lover? According to Paul Simon, how many ways must there be to leave your lover? 80, 50, 60, or 20? Slip out the back, Jack. Make a new plan, Stan. Get on the bus, Gus. Something, something, something. You don't have to be coy, Roy. There are a lot of ways. Let's see how many of you know exactly how many, at least. All right. 79% of you said 50 ways. Uh, the rest of you split between 80, 60, 20, but 79% of you. Oh, yeah, I literally, I went through all the words I know for this one. <laughs> uh, otherwise, sure. Uh, good job. Question number 12, coming up. The Mariana Trench. The Mariana Trench. Mariana Trench. It's the deepest part of any ocean on Earth. In which ocean would you find the Mariana Trench? Is it the Atlantic, the Indian, the Pacific, or the Arctic? Come here. Up. Yeah. Oh, the Simpsons is gonna be fun tonight, guys. Anybody out there? Whoa. Anybody out there joining us for the Simpsons? It's classic Simpsons. So if you're a Simpsons fan, saying, "Oh no, there's too many seasons. We don't want to do trivia over everything." Perfect. We're doing trivia over roughly seasons one through twelve. Uh, other questions may slip in, um, but for the most part, all these questions come from seasons one through twelve. Try to narrow it down, and it's all on Disney Plus, so you can at least watch like one or two episodes before nine o'clock. Uh, let's see what you guys thought. A couple of you said Atlantic and Indian. Nobody really guessed Arctic, but uh, seventy-six people said the Pacific, and seventy-six people were correct. Congratulations! It is the deepest the largest ocean uh, in every way imaginable, by surface area, by depth. Uh, the Pacific is the largest, and that is where you would find the Mariana Trench. Um, that is something floating around, a blobfish or something like that, in the depths of the ocean. Anybody out there have a... 
what's the name for a severe is it vasophobia? Uh, depth. Dark. I have that. Yeah, yeah. I know that like, is, I have it. Going into deep oceans, nope. just seeing pictures I don't of it. Not even like going into dark pools. <laughs> All right, question 13. Well Lucky number 13. Here's some more Chicago sports. Uh, Gina, I put this gif in there for you. Thank you. The Cubs traded George Bell to the White Sox before the 1992 season. What future all-star did the Sox trade back to the Cubs in return? So they traded George Bell to the Sox. Who did the Sox give back to the Cubs? Was it Henry Rodriguez, Sammy Sosa, Mark Grace, or Luis Gonzalez? That's uh, Ben Zobris, right? Mm -hmm. Ben Zobris went to Olivet Nazarene He's University here. for one semester. He's your friend. Yeah. <laughs> he was older than me. I didn't know him. He was there right before I went. And he wasn't there long. He was there for a semester, I think. Wasn't he your friend's roommate, though? He did. My, my old roommate that I lived with outside of college roomed with him. Uh, ben Zobris, what a guy. Chicago trivia is more difficult as a Wisconsin sports fan. Well, that's what you get. Just kidding. I'm sorry that it's hard. I imagine on this one, you could probably guess uh, if you just went with the name that you recognize the most because Sammy Sosa is the correct answer. Uh, he was a Sox for, uh, uh, White Sox first. He went to the Cubs, and that's where most of you probably know him from. All right, question 14. Uh, so this, th for this question one of the first times the picture is actually helpful this is the individual i'm looking for you to name passing away at the young age of 29 this alabama country boy was best known for songs like hey good looking your cheating heart and lovesick blues who are we talking about his name is there is it hank snow jimmy rogers hank williams or john denver could you do me a huge favor when you're done could you just down like a decent amount yeah. yeah but also it's probably the wine dave quizdala i imagine you know this remember we played trivia with kim and dave and dave just destroyed the country round all the old country songs yeah. i know you know these dave let's see what you all thought okay okay some of you said Jimmy Rogers. Nobody went for my John Denver throw there. Uh, the correct answer was Hank Williams. Hank Williams, good job. Uh, Hank Williams Jr., also very big in country music. Uh, moving on, question 15. We just have two multiple choice questions left, uh, and then we switch things up. So here we go, question 15. Which of these individuals, this one is just tough. There's no two ways about it. Which individual listed sang the theme to the 1966 James Bond movie, Thunderball. Which individual sang the theme to Thunderball? Was it Nancy Sinatra, Louis Armstrong, Shirley Bassey, or Tom Jones? Like being the odd call. Yeah, okay, fair, fair, fair. Yep, sometimes uh, I don't usually do sports questions at all. Uh, we do some every now and then. Um, but I will say that, that's sort of my Achilles heel is sports questions because I either make them too easy or too hard. Um, and with sport, Chicago sports mm -hmm. trivia, that's hard, that's hard to do. Yeah, it's tough. Uh, so thanks, guys, for, for dealing with my sports questions. Let's see what you thought. Uh, this one I know is tough. Nancy Sinatra, a lot of you said. Some of you said Tom Jones. Some of you said Shirley Bassey. Louis Armstrong only got seven. All of these individuals did sing themes uh, to uh, James Bond movies in different years, and all of them, I believe, from the 60s or 70s. Uh, so I tried not to do anything crazy. Uh, there's a list out there. I think it's a ranker or, or a lister or something of the worst James Bond uh, themes, songs. And this one, out of like 27, was 26. I don't know how much I put into the list because the Chris Cornell one was at the bottom. Um, and sure, maybe it wasn't a great song, but how dare you? How dare you? Uh, the correct answer here is Tom Jones. Tom Jones sang the theme song to Thunderball. So good job. 37 of you. That'll separate a little bit. So here's how it's going to work. We have one multiple choice question left, and then we'll look at the standings, and then we're going to switch things up. The questions will be of a different format, so I'll explain before we move to that. 
Question number 16, our final multiple choice. This one, again, even if you're not a big Chicago sports fan, you have a one in four shot. And uh, I think this was pretty big news. Which Chicago sports team has most recently won a league championship? So which of the teams listed most recently won the championship in their league? Is it the White Sox, the Blackhawks, the Cubs, or the Bears? Charles Balf, yeah, bringing the Simpsons trivia. Oh, bye, Taco. <laughs> He's not feeling the chair tonight. He lost his floof. Yes, Lindsey Davis. He's feeling the breeze now. All right. Yeah. Question 16. Cat just ran by. 88% uh, of you. Congrats. 103 people knew it's the Cubs 2016. Uh, the Blackhawks won not long before that, 24. 15, 14, I think 15. Uh, the Bears back in 86, White Sox 2005. Uh, but the Cubs had that, what was it, 108 year uh, gap or something like that since the last time they won. Um, so shout out, good job, Cubs. All right, I'm going to put the rankings up on the screen. And while you watch those, I'll explain how the rest of this game works because it's not multiple choice anymore. Uh, but first, let's celebrate Missy D, Testicular Tuesday, and Jeffrey in first. Second and third. I saw Kevin Flug still up there. 17th, I'm Ron Burgundy. Good job. Uh, Wizard Angst. Your guys' team names are great. Jay Twizzle, Jen Sterna. Uh, Toby Likes Hot Dogs. Uh, I saw, uh, we almost watched Jack the other day and uh, asked Gina how many times in the last four days I've said, oh I, do a, I do a great impression of a hot dog. A lot. <laughs> ah, I love that movie. I love Robin. Uh, anyway, I'm distracted. So here's how the next round is going to work. The rest of this game is going to be a little bit tougher solely by the fact that you no longer have multiple choice options. So you won't have A, B, C, D to choose from. For the rest of this game, you will actually have to type in your answer, come up with it all on your own. So you still have 30 seconds to answer. The only thing that's going to change about your answers is you're no longer going to lose points if it takes you longer to answer than someone else. As long as you get your answer in before the timer hits zero, you're gonna earn all of the points. And from this point forward, the points are increasing every five questions. So after this, questions 17 through 21 are going to be worth 150 points, and then it's 200 points, and then 300 points. Um, so they go up. So again, even if you're not up there in first, second, or third right now, you definitely still have the opportunity to move up the leaderboard. Uh, Leader Boyd. Leader Boyd. Board. I've been watching Boardwalk Empire. Boyd. <laughs> um, you still have an opportunity to move up. So don't give up. One thing you need to know, you have the full time to answer, so take your time and type as well as you can. Try not to misspell things. If you spell something wrong, the computer's going to mark you wrong. Uh, I can fix that. I can give you the points, but there's always the chance that I miss your answer. I don't see it. Um, so I do my best, but the, the way to make sure that you get points is to take your time and spell your answers correctly. That's why I give you all 30 seconds to do it. Something I haven't been mentioning, but I want to make sure you guys realize if you're watching this live stream and you're seeing the question up here on my screen, uh, so if you watch the question here, there's going to be a timer, but make sure that you pay attention to the timer on your phone because there's a gap in between my screen and the actual game. So I don't want you to miss out on answering because you think you have three or four seconds left when in reality the timer already hit zero. So this is just a tip. Um, that I haven't been giving because I know in the past people have had issues saying, oh, my time ran out. That's probably why. If you feel like you're missing three or four seconds, make sure you're not watching the timer on my screen. Make sure you watch it on your phone. Uh, but other than that, guys, everything the same. The next five questions. Look, I remembered for once to announce it. The next five questions all come from one category. This is a picture round. This is our first picture round we've done on uh, this new online platform. So what that means is I'm going to put a picture up on the screen and you have to identify it. You'll understand what I mean when we start the next question. The next five are all of this sort. What we are going to do tonight for our mini themed round, and what that means is all five of these questions are the same. I'm going to put up a picture of a famous guitarist. A famous guitarist. I promise you've heard of them all, but we'll see if you recognize them. Some of these are easy, 
Some of them a little more, uh, a little tougher, but you earn 150 points if you answer correctly, whether you get it in right away or you wait till the right uh, at the end, as long as your answer is submitted before we hit zero. So here we go, guys, before we go. Cheers. Thanks for being here. Cheers to the mini round. Cheers to Cindy. Thank you for giving us great categories for tonight. Here we go. Question 17, the first one in our mini round. Again, this is a picture. Name this famous guitarist. You have 30 seconds to do so. Name this famous guitarist. It's all you have to do. Type it in, hit submit. I'm going to see your answers come through, uh, especially with this one. If you don't spell it right, I'll be able to fix it. Don't you worry. Christiane Young once got a reusable Slurpee cup with the NFL team helmet, so took it upon yourself to learn them all. I love it. I love it. All right. Let's see. If time is up. Uh, let's see. So this would be a good example. You guys can see how this looks on my end. So I see all of your answers come through. So if you look at my screen right now, if you look at the screen through YouTube, you'll be able to see when I mark your answers correct, they get lumped together. So right now it says that Jimi Hendrix has a 69% um, correct guessing. But as I add these in, so 76% of you guessed Jimi Hendrix, Jimi Hendrix, Jimi Hendrix. I want you to see this because on your phone, it may not lump all these together. Um, but as long as I tell you that I marked it right, you're going to get points. And anybody that put Jimi Hendrix, Jimi Hendrix, 83% of you out there, good job. That was the first one in our name, the famous guitarist. We're moving on. Same format, same question, different artist. Which famous guitarist is this? So once again, just type your answer in. Hit submit before the timer hits zero. Seventies NFL helmet trivia. Oh my god. EJV the fourth. All right, time's almost up. All right, let's see what you guys thought. Ooh, I like the individual that gave me the full name. Uh, somebody said, I'm going to kick myself when I find out. I bet you will. Uh, the correct answer is B.B. King. B.B. King. It was hard to find a picture of him without his... He guesses that. Yeah, his guitars. He has B.B. King written on the head and the neck of him. Um, so it's hard to find a picture where he didn't just give it away. B.B. King, good job. Uh, Marvin Gaye. Taco out there as a guest. All right, here we go. Question 19. Name this famous guitarist. Name this famous guitar player. Some of you have been guessing this already. All right, everybody is in. You guys, I, I want to say, I, I do not want to skip over. For as many people as we have playing, we still have uh, 112 people answering. So pretty much nobody's left. And you guys are doing fantastic with the spelling. Um, so it really makes my job easier. Uh, it makes this move quicker so you're not sitting here staring at my face. Um, I would put it over on Taco, but he is just glued to Gina right now. He does not want to sit on his seat. He oh, wants why? to be right next to her. Uh, but you guys are spelling fantastically, which makes this easy. And Chuck Berry. Chuck Berry. If you spelled it B-A-R-R-Y, that's fine. Uh, I, I'm not being that specific. Chuck Berry, the correct answer. A lot of you were guessing Chuck Berry for the first two. Uh, Chuck Berry is the correct one. Here, we have two of these left, two more like this, and then we're going on to random questions again. Question number 20. Name this famous guitarist. 
Who is this guitar player? Has anybody out there watched Boardwalk Empire? They just started it. I'm on episode five, season one on HBO. I had heard about it. I didn't know that it was directed by Martin Scorsese and Mark Wahlberg. Uh, so that was nice to find out uh, and to see the, the individuals in different roles on there. Uh, but let me know if you guys liked it, if you watched it, if it's worth me continuing. Uh, let's see what you guys thought. I'm grading these for you real quick. Ooh, close guess. <laughs> oh, some interesting guesses. Uh, okay, we have two pages of guesses this time, so give me one second. I want to make sure that you all get your points that you deserve. That's what I'm here for. All right. Correct answer is Jimmy Page. Jimmy Page of Led Zeppelin. Um, a couple of you said Robert Plant, lead, lead singer. Of course that was Jimmy Page, yes. Uh, Robert Plant was the lead singer, so same band. Um, quite a few of you said Getty Lee from Rush. He was a bassist uh, and singer and synthesizer, and keyboard player for a trio. He did a lot. Um, Van Halen, John Paul Jones. I'm looking at everyone's guesses. Yeah, you guys are all guessing famous guess. musicians. You're doing well that way. Yeah. Looks familiar. Bob Dylan, dude from Aerosmith. Uh, somebody said Janis Joplin. <laughs> I can see that from far away. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> all right, there's one more of these, one more, but it's question 21, which means it's the 10 question cheersing time. It always takes a second to load, so. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, I love you, Dave. Oh, I love That's you. That's fair, Kelsey. What did Kelsey say? She said that was me. Ha ha, I thought it was a girl. Yeah, it fair enough. Like uh, name this famous guitarist. You have 30 seconds. Ooh, this is a hard one. I know. A lot of the other ones, uh, obviously from the 50s, 60s, 70s, uh, I wanted to do something a little more recent. Do you know this one? Do you figure it out? Don't say it. I feel like I do, but then I feel like I don't. Um, I will say that most of the pictures that I found on Google uh, gave it away because he wears a red hat that says, Make America Rage Again. I know it. Yeah, I'm he sure looks he different did. every photo, I swear. He does. He does. He's incredible. Uh, incredible guitarist. Lots of guesses. Did you? Mm -hmm. They were supposed to be doing something. The crowd the was... Very well behaved, but respectful. I'm not being sarcastic. Oh, good. It was Somebody surprising. said Taco's evil twin. Oh my god! I'm pretty sure if there are twins, Taco is the evil twin. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's a Taco good twin out there. We love him, but sometimes he is just the, the, the evil twin. That country guy. All right, I got one more. Couple more answers to look through. I'll put them up on the screen so you guys can appreciate. This is the final guitarist question. So again, every day when we do general knowledge trivia, we do a five question mini round. I can't promise that it's always going to be something that you personally know, um, but I enjoy mini rounds where we do five questions from the same subject. Um, if, if guitarist wasn't your thing, come back. Next time we play general knowledge trivia, it'll be a different round. We don't do the same. It won't be guitarist again. It'll be something different. Um, so thank you guys that don't love music. Uh, anybody out there that doesn't love music, Music, thank you for doing this round uh, and making your way through it. So the correct answer here is Tom Morello, as long as whatever you put sounded like Tom Morello, Rage Against the Machine. Good job. Uh, let's look at the rankings, standings. Let's see what's changed, if anything has. Missy D is still in first. Testicular Tuesday up in second. The Spicy Meet the Balls in third. I see Monorail in fourth. Someone said, how do you exclude Phoebe Buffay? Yeah, that's that's fair. <laughs> and then Jennifer Stern said it'd be awesome if famous works of art. Which I think be really cool yeah, Jen too. Stern, I actually have that round already created. So that's what I do is uh, what you guys are seeing, and that's why I like including these.
because this is work I've already done. We, we've hosted these kind of things at the bars over the last eight years. Um, I absolutely have a famous works of art. I'll give you some clues right now on rounds that you will see. Um, famous works of art. We have famous, um, famous books with the titles removed from the cover. So you get to see the cover, but you don't know the title. You have to give it. You have to submit that. Um, we do famous movies, famous Netflix original shows. These are all visual rounds, right? So where you see a picture. Um, famous Joey's, famous Bob's, uh, all sorts of fun visual rounds that we do. Um, so again, thank you guys for just showing up for this. With so many of you here, it certainly makes doing this worth it. Uh, we're only doing this for you guys. Uh, and uh, all right, so he's seen enough of me and he's finally in his chair, so you can stare at him for a while. Here we go, question 22. We are back to random questions. You still have 30 seconds to answer. This time I'm looking for the name of a film. Try not to do too much movie or TV trivia for tonight uh, at the request of Cindy, but this one's about Prince too, and that's a music question. So Prince's 11th studio album was number one on the charts for eight weeks and was also the soundtrack to what 1989 movie? Looking for the name of a 1989 movie. Think this one over, you have the full time. Prince's 11th studio album, number one on the charts. Let's see. Let's see what you thought. Prince trivia. You love that. Oh, I love Prince trivia. We just watched Purple Rain like last week, two weeks ago. All right. I got to mark some of these right. Actually, everybody that got this one spelled it right. Um, so, Purple Rain is not the correct answer. The correct answer is Batman. Batman. Purple Rain, I believe, was 1984. Yeah, 1984. That's why I emphasized the year. Yeah, that's a tricky question. That is a tricky question, but I told you these questions get a little tougher towards the end. They're worth 200 points apiece now. Um, Batman, uh, the incredible uh, Michael Keaton film, uh, 1989, Batman, the 1989 film. He released this, so it was interesting because it wasn't just a soundtrack to a movie. It was a Prince album um, called Batman that was also the soundtrack to the film. Uh, so it was his 11th studio album, and just to reemphasize, uh, Purple Rain was his sixth studio album. So Prince at the time putting out <laughs> basically more than a, an album a year. All right, here we go. Question 23. Hey, you know what? Deal with it. Question 23, who was the second person? To set foot on the moon. What is the name of the second individual to set foot on the moon? Stupid, sexy prince. Bat Dance is objectively the best prince song, Rich Hanson. I love it. Uh, you got tricked by the pick. Brad, I will say my disclaimer. I did say that the pictures and gifts don't tend to be hints. I understand how you feel. Uh, that was not my intention to trick you. Um, but yeah, the pictures and the gifts are always just there for fun. Get the funk mm -hmm. out. Love it. Yes to the books, Kim was Yeah, I can understand you liking that. All right. Question number 23. I just got to fix a few of these. Jen Widener, I saw your comment in there. I'll look into it. I'll look into your answers. Sometimes weird things do happen with this system. Unfortunately, that's unavoidable. All right, all right. <laughs> Somebody out there is still uh, guessing famous guitarists because um, we have a bunch of people saying Buzz Aldrin. One person down there said Billy Joel Armstrong uh, from Green Day. Uh, the correct answer was Buzz Aldrin, Edwin Buzz Aldrin, as long as you gave me any form of that answer. Um, I did not accept Buzz Lightyear, uh, sorry, but Buzz Aldrin, I did accept. Question 24, looking for the name of an individual. This is an artist, a singer, a solo artist, after he left Genesis in 1975, which pushed Phil Collins forward as the band's vocalist. Which individual left Genesis? 
1975, which led to Phil Collins becoming the band's vocalist. Buzz Taco. Yes, Jeff D. I'll accept it. I'll go back. Buzz Taco. Hey, Katniss. All right, hello. Everything is fine. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's go over these answers. What's his name? The other famous guy. <laughs> Let's look at these answers. I love, uh, I know you guys don't, but I love the frustrated answers like the ARG, I know this. Uh, I know this guy. Um, I understand and I feel for you. So this may make you appreciate uh, our typical general knowledge nights. I try to keep it pretty even keel um, throughout the night. I don't, I don't do anything that's too hard. But again, tonight, we're doing specific questions from specific categories, and that was Cindy's gift because she won the donation drawing raffle. Um, this will happen every now and then. Uh, some of these questions will still be simple for some people, tough for others. And uh, even with this one being hard for a lot of you, 58% of people still correctly said Peter Gabriel. Um, Peter Gabriel Salisbury Hill uh, left Genesis in 1975. So good job we'll do 25 and then we will look at the standings one last time before we go through the rest of the questions question 25 what is the name of the sweet mixer what is the name of the sweet mixer that is added to tequila and orange juice to make a tequila sunrise what is the name of the sweet mixer the addition that is added to tequila and orange juice to make a tequila sunrise tommy widener here's your cocktail question i always like some alcohol questions in here Sledgehammer. Yeah, Sledgehammer. I think it does still uh, holds the record for the most MTV Music Video Awards. I believe it won nine. Yes, bartender questions for Maggie, too. Sledgehammer, that stop motion video. Thanks, I may go drink one now. Tommy, make me one, too, please. Uh, who here? Any new girl fans? We have Winston drinking that delicious fruity drink that Nick refuses to make. <laughs> All right, I'm just marking a few answers correct based on your spelling. Winston Ferguson mix around. Somebody put that as their answer. We did New Girl Trivia and I loved it. It's one of our favorite shows, Gina and myself. Uh, so some of you said grenadine, pineapple juice, cranberry juice, triple sec, Splenda, sweet and sour, vermouth, Quantreau. Quantrao, uh, maraschino cherry juice, blue cur curacao, Winston Ferguson, mix around, amaretto, simple syrup, cherry juice, lime. Uh, this is a pomegranate juice mixer named grenadine. Grenadine, the correct answer. There were a couple cool gifts of them making a tequila sunrise, but it listed the ingredients, so that didn't really fit the bill here. All right, we'll look at the rankings one more time. Uh, after this, we will go through the rest of the questions, and we'll see where everybody stands at the end. Um, while this is happening, Jen, I'm going to look into your questions. You're back up into fourth, so maybe something was just lost in the background. Someone said I answered you King and said it wrong. Uh, so it will say it's wrong on your phone if I correct it. So if you put BB King, you got points. Um, so if you didn't spell it how I had it, if you put periods and I didn't have periods, uh, then it will probably tell you that you were wrong on your phone. But if you put BB King, I gave you points. All right, let me go to this. I'm going to let this go through twice because this is the final time you'll see it before the end when we go over the final standings.
Okay, looking into this gen as I promised. Still letting this go through here for the second time. Is it still in the taco can? Okay, good. Mm -hmm. uh, Jen Widener, what's your what's your player name? What's your team name tonight? Is it Jen Widener or just Jen? Just Jen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like, and you know, guys, uh, I'll just put this out there now. This internet platform is the best platform that we have next to having you hold up a piece of paper, um, which would not allow us to do as much as we would like. Um, and sometimes I think answers just don't go through. Um, so it's not that yours didn't count, Jen. It just doesn't say, it says that I didn't get an answer. Um, so again, that could be one thing. If your internet got caught up and didn't submit it, um, that is that is literally just a, a risk that we take doing internet trivia. But this is the option that we have during this lockdown period. So I do apologize if that ever happens. It doesn't happen often, but I know that it is a pain in the ass when it does happen. If I was in your shoes, um, I would not feel good about it. So please understand that I understand. Um, and if I could fix this easily, if I could just fix it, I would. Um, but if it says that an answer just wasn't submitted, I can't. Um, I don't think I can do anything about that. Um, yeah, and it, it says Jen, and again, I'm not going to do this for everybody. I'm just doing this because Jen specifically asked. Um, this is just the issue that we have with using the internet. Uh, but Jen, it says that you got points for everything except Jimi Hendrix, um, even though it says we didn't get an answer from you for Chuck Berry. Um, but it gave you points for Chuck Berry. So I think something just gets caught up in the internet. I, I do apologize. Uh, we are doing the best we can with what we have. Um, so thank you guys so much just for, for being here and playing. Uh, we're moving on. These are the final five questions. Or what question is this? 25. So six questions left. Six questions left. Each of these will be worth more and more points. This next one is still worth 200, but then we're moving to 250 after that. Uh, Jolene. Jolene. Jolene is a classic American country tune about a woman who's afraid of her husband cheating on her with a beautiful redhead, who hasn't had that dream? Who wrote and sang the song in 1973? Who gave us the original version of Jolene? 1973, what is the name of the artist? There's an awesome version of this song. Um, if somebody took like the, act, the vinyl album that's meant to be played at whatever the RPMs typically are and they slowed it down mm -hmm. to the other option, so it's drop like 10 octaves and it's slow and That's it's incredible yeah. yeah yeah i'll post that video so if you're not in our bag of tricks online community we created it for times like this when i you know mentioned that there's a cool video that i would love you guys to see i will post it in that community later um i did it with the harry potter video earlier today that i think everybody should watch i'm not gonna hmm. here it gets stuck in your head harry potter harry I potter like harry that. potter harry potter I've had the Golden Girls theme. I woke up singing the Golden Girls theme. Hell yeah. Rip it for money. So you guys did not struggle with this one. Dolly Parton originally sang Jolene. Good job. Jolene. Jolene. Question 27. Looking for the name of a film. The name of a film from 1976. It was a sleeper hit when released in 1976. So it did not take the box off by storm but it is now considered to be one of the greatest sports films ever made. So there's a big hint. One of the greatest sports films ever made from 1976. What film took home the 1977 Oscar for Best Picture? One of the greatest sports films ever made. Released in 1976, took home the 1977 Oscar for Best Picture. What is the name of the film? Gina knows it. She's charading, yes, charading. Yeah, charading it to me right now. Heartstrings on Netflix? What's Heartstrings? Oh, that sounds right. Remember Steph was telling us about it? I haven't been to a lot of them. Somebody else just told me, or I saw online about a trippy cartoon 
uh, Netflix, The Midnight Gospel. They said if you're a fan of Adventure Time or Rick and Morty. It's a, yeah, it's a trippy animated show on Netflix. I think I know what I'm doing later. Netflix, 9 to 5. What a may, way to make a living. I saw 9 to 5 Broadway in Chicago. That was good. I'm going to be a, a bottle in before Simpsons show you. This is going to be interesting. All right. Well, you're wrong. Yeah, you know, it's just, it tastes so good. <laughs> Aldi winking owl. Uh, you guys did very, 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 very well. I love, I got to say, I love you guys out there when you don't know it who give me just fun, crazy answers. Uh, like I said, I appreciate the frustrated answers, but I love, uh, like, the individual out there who knows that it's not right, but they put Space Jam with a smiley face. Uh, the correct answer is, I have a Space Jam gift coming up here in a little bit. Rocky! Rocky! Uh, Sylvester Stallone pretty much sold everything he owned. I think there's a story out there that Sylvester Stallone, um, he owned, it was either, I think it was turtles. He owned some turtles and he sold his turtles to make enough money, to get enough money to, to, to fund some of this movie. And when he became literally like a millionaire after it, he bought those turtles back. And I think they're still alive. Turtles live Are they forever. Like big tortoises? I don't know. I think they're turtles. I could be wrong, guys. That's kind of adorable. But, you know, I'm just here to put out facts and let you guys correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, here we go. Question 28. Yes, Brad. Thank you. All right, some Beatles trivia. You love them or you hate them. Uh, most of you love them. Replaced by, trust me, people send me messages about how much they don't like the Beatles. I don't want to know those people. Uh, replaced by Ringo Starr in 1962, who was the Beatles' original drummer? So who was the drummer for the original Beatles before Ringo Starr replaced him? I told you, Cindy was our donation drawing winner. We love her. We appreciate her. She asked for 60s and 70s music in addition to other things, and this was one of those 60s and 70s music questions. So, Cindy, if you're out there, I know you're out there. Cindy, I hope you get this one right. Don't feel bad if you don't. Like I told everybody else, Cindy doesn't know these questions. She just told me what type of category she would like. One more for you, Dee. All right, you guys did pretty well. There's one, one guest that I love, and I'm going to put it up there. I'll put all of them up there in just one second. <laughs> uh, I'll take that. All right. Uh, so a lot of you said Pete Best or Peter Best. That was the correct answer. Good job, Pete Best. He went on to do other things. Um, certainly not to the fame that the Beatles saw, uh, but it's one of those things. He can beat himself up, but honestly, if he had never been replaced, maybe the Beatles wouldn't have become what they did. Um, but I like Ringo Moon. That's a good answer. Um, Jack Irons down there. Uh, he was in Pearl Jam for a minute. Um, Keith Moon, Jimmy Nicole, the one-armed drummer from Def Leppard, Rick Allen, I think is the name you're looking for. Um, Tommy Moore, Sid Vicious. Yeah, Animal from the Muppet Babies, or the Muppets. Uh, Dave Grohl, drummer for Nirvana and tons of other stuff. Uh, somebody said Taco, and my dad's going to kill me. I love that answer. All right, so good job. 51 of you knew it. Dave Cran. Uh, yep. <laughs> Here we go. Question 29. What sweet, cold treat is advertised as the, quote, ice cream of the future? I'm looking for a specific brand name here. What sweet cold treat is advertised as the ice cream of the future? I'm sure many of you have had it probably at amusement parks or festivals. At what point is the future here? You're getting too philosophical for me, Chris. Somebody posted for all of you Office fans out there, um, everybody else, uh, I think we all appreciate the scene in the end of the series where Andy says, you know, I just wish we knew we were in the good times when we were in them. Somebody posted that, so like, now, like, say, oh, you know, how much do you miss going to the bar, doing all this stuff? But it'll come back, it'll come back, we'll do those things in the future. In the meantime, we can hang out online and stay forget home, about, stay alive. yeah, stay home, stay alive, play trivia. Boom, boom, boom. I would like to know when the future is. A lot of you wondering. 
Yeah, I mean, now is the now, now, now. We had Dairy Queen today, which legitimately, if you guys ever wonder how I come up with questions, it is no more complicated than the fact that we, for the first time this year in 2020, had Dairy Queen. Uh, and then I was thinking about ice cream and then I wrote this question. <laughs> That's it. That's it. There's not much more to my brain. Uh, I eat ice cream. I write about ice cream. Uh, there are a lot of different ways you guys spelled this, so hang with me here. I'm just marking them right. Uh, the correct answer was dip and dots. Dip and dots. Doesn't matter if you spelled it like I did, as long as you wrote dip and dots. Um, it may not tell you on your phone that you got it, but as long as you wrote dip and dots, however you spelled it, I marked it right. Here we go. Question 30. We have two questions left. Question 30. Ginger Baker, Eric Clapton, and Jack Bruce formed which band of the 1960s? Famous trio. I'm sure you've heard of it, even if you're not a fan. Ginger Baker, Eric Clapton, and Jack Bruce formed which band in the 1960s? Kevin Koch! I'm so happy you're here. And yes, this was, you, if you've been playing trivia with us, you know that I love my friend Kevin, who's down in Florida. Uh, this was Kevin's shirt. He gave it to me uh, four years ago now, Kevin, was it? Before you moved. Um, and it, oh, for, really? He gave you that shirt? Yeah, this is from <laughs> Kevin Koch. Um, any friends out there who like Game of Thrones and The Legend of Zelda. So it's uh, The Legend of Hodor. Hodor, Hodor, Hodor. Uh, it's dangerous to go alone. Take Bran. Um, so a Game of Thrones Zelda mashup. That is courtesy of Kevin. Thank you so much, Kevin. I wear it all the time. How you know you're an old lady at heart? Whenever I hear Bran, I'm like, mmm, Bran. Mmm, Raisin Bran. <laughs> Uh, there are a lot of good guests. A lot of you gave me bands that Eric Clapton was in. But only one of them was correct. We're going to see it, and then we have one final question here in just a second. Thank you guys for being here tonight. I'm having you're a great welcome, time. Buddy. Oh, thanks for being here. Guys, I, no uh, I usually mention this, but I haven't yet. If you're out there, please, in the comments, give Gina a big old high five, a thank you, a virtual hug. Uh, she's the one that makes these events happen. I just get to hang out here and drink a whole bunch of wine in front of the camera. She's the one also drinking something behind the camera, uh, drinking water, uh, answering your questions, comments, and keeping up with any issues that arise. So please give her a big thank you. If it was not for her, we would not be doing this. Um, so a lot of you said cream. Uh, some of you said Yardbirds. Uh, Eric Clapton was in Yardbirds. Some of you said Derek and the Dominoes. Eric Clapton was in the Dominoes. Uh, but the correct answer here was Cream. Eric Clapton, Ginger Baker, and Jack Bruce. Cream. Good job. All right, one final question. And we do get another 10-question drink because it's going to take a second to load. So cheers. You need to get a drink at some point. You do, before Simpsons. I mean, I had two beers before. <laughs> Brad Silzer, high five. <laughs> this guy, that's my kind of comedy, Brad. High five. Every time I see Brad, I just remember we need to do Always Sunny. I feel like we should do... Why haven't we yet? I don't know. We'll do it next week. All right, here's the Space Jam gift that I promised. This, The answer to this question is a number, so you can only type numbers in. Don't try to type in letters. It won't let you. You can only type numbers. When Michael Jordan returned to the Bulls in 1995 after his short retirement, what jersey number did he initially wear? before changing back to his iconic 23. What number did Jordan wear when he came back to the Bulls, whoops, uh, before returning to his iconic 23? What the heck? Hang on one second, I don't know where the game went. Sorry, everybody. Oh, here we are. Okay, timer started. Uh, so again, I'm a very simple person. I've been watching The Last Dance, uh, the 90s Chicago Bulls documentary that many, are you, many of you are watching based on what you're posting online. Uh, I just finished, like many of you, episode three and four this weekend. Uh, I was a big Dennis Rodman fan in the 90s. Big Bulls fan overall. I still got to find my Bulls trading cards. They're somewhere. Hey, buddy. What? No barking. All right, so many of you knew this. Many of you were close. A lot of different answers. The correct answer here, he came back. He was 45. 
45 before we went back to 23. Congratulations to the 42% of you, which was 48 people that knew that. So good job, guys. Cheers. Let's do one more. Cheers to being here tonight. Cheers to Cindy for winning the donation draffle drawing, uh, drawing and suggesting some of the categories we did tonight. If we draw your name, you can choose a theme trivia night next week. Uh, you know, if you want to do Always Sunny or if you want to do Harry Potter or, or something we've never done, you request it. Uh, we can make that happen. Or you can tell us up to six categories that we can implement into a general knowledge night uh, in your honor. So we look forward to doing that for one of you. Cheers. But right now, we're going to finish this out. We're going to look at the final standings for tonight's game. If you are in first place, please send a message to the Bag of Tricks Entertainment <laughs> Facebook page. Uh, don't, don't just comment on the YouTube because sometimes it hides those comments from us. So send a message to the Bag of Tricks Entertainment Facebook page saying, hey, I won. We'll verify that with you, and then we'll tell you how to claim your prize with Elmhurst Brewing Company. So here we go. Ooh, I like that. Christmas in July. If we're still doing this in July, hopefully we're not. No. no. All right. Uh, here we go, guys. Drum roll, please. And, oh, wait. <laughs> I clicked the wrong button. It's going to take us it. back to question one. I always click the wrong button. Um, it's when I try to drum roll. I need a separate, I need a drum roll app or something. Uh, genuine, bonafide, electrified, monorail in first. Eric S. in second. Testicular Tuesday in third. I'm going to go out on a limb. I don't know this, but I feel like Testicular Tuesday is crispy or Ed Vaughn. Um, if you guys are out there and I'm right, please let us know. I feel like that's either Chris or Ed, um, just based on the regular alter team that plays on Tuesdays. That is a different type of that name. I'm going to let these results circulate. So you can see where you all landed. Again, if you are genuine, bona fide, electrified, monorail, if you haven't yet, please send us a message to the Baker Tricks. Oh, it's Chris. Oh, it's Chris. I was wrong. Chris Barbie was the bona fide electric. Quiet, Siri. Uh, so congratulations to our first place winner. Shout out to everybody else that played. Thank you again to Cindy um, as our donation winner this week. We have Simpsons trivia coming up in just 37 short minutes. So go pour yourself something to drink. You could definitely fit in one episode of The Simpsons between seasons 1 through 12. That's what we're quizzing you on tonight. And then come back at 9 p.m. Central Time and play Simpsons Trivia with us. We also have a prize up for grabs for that one. It is a $25 gift card to Elmer Spirit Company. So thank you to them for sponsoring both of those. If you're not interested in Simpsons, come back and see us tomorrow. We have Music Bingo with Bobby K at 7. We have Parks and Rec Trivia at 9. Until then, guys, please have a great night. Take care of each other. Be nice to each other. Be safe and wash your hands. Have a good night.